This tutorial is based on Harry Alisavakis' tutorial for Unity. I've linked it in the description if you want to check it out. All right, to start, I'm going to import the object file and the texture here. So let's start with just making a spatial node here, and then as a child, make particles. And then let's see, we'll go into draw passes here, and we'll just drag on the OBJ file there. And then under geometry instance here, click geometry, create a new shader material here. Click on that new shader, click there. And now we can add our shader stuff. So we're gonna, it's going to be a shader type of spatial. It would be easier if it was particle, but you can't access the vertex property if it's not spatial. So we'll have to do that unshaded. I don't want it to be lit. And then cool disabled so that you can see it from both sides. And then we'll set up some fields here. So we have one for the texture, two for colors. Um, I'm going to basically kind of randomly choose a, an interpolation between these two colors so they the butterflies can have different colors. And then the displacement amount will be how much the wings flap and the speed will be what the speed they flap at. And then pi is just a constant for pi because the shading language in Godot doesn't currently have a constant for pi. I'll go back here to the shader params and I'll just pick a couple random colors for the um, colors of the butterfly, right? to choose between, so maybe something like that. And then texture here, I'll just drag on here. And if I don't touch these, it will just use the defaults I've set, which is what I want. Um, so I'm gonna come in. And so basically what I'm gonna do, I'll explain real quick. If I create the fragment shader here, or the fragment function method here, don't copy this yet. I'm just gonna use this to display what I'm doing. And I'm going to create a mask, basically, by taking the x part of the UV. I'm going to set the L beta to equal that mask, basically. So save the scene real quick. OK, so now you can see right here, I'm by taking 1 minus sine of pi times the UV x, and then I set that as the color. You can see it's white over here. It's black here towards the middle, and then it's white over here. Let me show you what the actual mesh looks like here in Blender. If I switch to wireframe, you can see here that there are two cuts along this quad here. And what I want to do is make basically these outside vertices move up and down, but I want these to stay in the middle or basically not move at all. So by masking like this, I can say it's zero here and it's one here is basically what the mask is determining. So I just multiply that times the displacement and it'll move by the full amount here, but it'll move by zero over here. So I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna do this in the vertex method. So I create the mask by taking one minus sine of pi times the x of the UV. Then I'm gonna get a random value, which I will create um, using color um, in the particle shader, which I'll show in a bit. I just get the color and multiply by 10 to create a noticeable offset, which you'll see in a second here. And then I take the Y coordinates of the, see so you can see it's moving up and down right now. So I take this Y amount plus sine of this random value plus time times displacement speed. So that's how fast it's going, time times displacement speed. And then this random value will basically make so each individual butterfly in the swarm has a sort of a different starting time, so they don't all flap at the same rate. They don't, their wings aren't all moving up at the same time and down at the same time. Then I multiply this times the displacement amount times the mass. So you can see right here in the middle, these vertexes are barely moving up and down, but outside here they're moving by the full displacement amount because the mask is about zero here and it's one over here. So now I'm going to come in here. Again, I'm going to need the random value, which I will be using to choose between the two colors I specified. And so I'm going to sample the color. I'm going to sample the texture here using the UV. And then I'm going to multiply it by the color, the two colors interpolated by the random value. So I just mix these two colors by whatever this value is, which is going to be 0 to 1. So I mix those two, and I set the color there. 
then I'm going to set the alpha to the image alpha and I'm going to set the uh, alpha scissor to be, so you can see it, it's cutting it around there uh, based on the image alpha. And by setting the alpha scissor, I can save a little performance by just not rendering anything that's less than that amount. See, if I take it off, you can see the edges are kind of blurred here, but that's kind of a little more costly in performance. And, and since these are going to be small, you won't really notice it. So I just leave it jagged like that. It saves a little rendering. And then you set the alpha actually there. And then the albedo is just going to be the color that we determined. So you can see here, it's got this color just multiplied by some interpolation. This random value is pretty much going to be zero right now. So if I go back to the particles here, so that's the basic setup. So now I can go into the process material, create a particles material, and then you see they start making a bunch. Let's make 32 be the amount and the lifetime will be three. So they have been pretty long there. And then come into the particles material, gravity, disable that, set the emission shape to be a sphere, set the sphere radius to be like five, spread, set that to zero. And then initial velocity, I'm going to set it to 20. And I think that's everything there. And then finally, hue variation can be used to basically choose a random color. So you can see how they all flap at the same beat, kind of same rhythm. So hue variation can be used to determine, to like choose a random color for this, which is set in the vertex information. Uh, of the color. So here if I set the variation of one and then I set the random to be basically a value of one. Oh wait, it's, uh, I believe it's, no it's zero I think. Where's it again? Oh yeah, I have to choose the uh, color here. So I set the variation to be one, set the randomness to be one, and then I have to choose this color to be red. That's right, I forgot about that. So you can see now it's sort of choosing between those because I'm using the X component, which is red. So I choose the red amount. So this needs to be one and the rest need to be zero. So I choose variation of one, randomness of one, and then it it's basically randomly choosing a value of zero to one for this component, the red component, which is the X component. So if I come back to this shader, you can see it's selecting color.x, which is the vertex's um, x color, right? Which was set by the particles um, material. So it's a value of zero to one and it's random for each particle. So it creates a random starting offset for each of them. And that's pretty much it. You can play with this and make it look however you want. You can choose whatever colors and stuff, play with the process material to get it to have different shapes and stuff.